Hey, I'm MC Rick. It's a program. Let's all rise to sing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars Yeah, hey everybody, it's the program, we're on TV, once again, once a day, every day, turn on the machines and we start talking for an hour, here we go, we're doing it, I'm saying things, I'm on the couch, boy, it's a day today, it's it's daytime and it's hot, it's, it's a hot day, you remember? I've been talking about this. This is the day it's supposed to be 100 degrees, and that's all I can think about. And people are thinking, saying, and you see, you see people. You know, remember this last week, viewers, or last year, or whenever you are, you say, "How are you?" And you say, "Oh, it's 100 degrees. I heard it's going to be 100 degrees. That's the talk of the town, uh, and it's happening. I can feel it. I'm hot right now. I mean, you can't see the heat over the airwaves a little bit, but it's there. Maybe we get some of those." Heat waves, whoa, it's hot, like this. This is what the air is doing, if you could see it. But, uh, you know, I can't really see, I can't see the air. Maybe you can't see the air all the time, you can see right through the air. Sometimes you can see the air if they're smoking it. Or if it's really crazy hot and you can see those heat waves on the street, and you look at the street and you're like, whoa, maybe I shouldn't be walking where the heat waves are. You know it's hot when uh, you're hot, you're not even moving. Oh, <laughs> something's sharp on the couch now. Ouch. Maybe time for a new couch when this couch is sharp. You know your couch is messed up when there are sharp things in it that stab you. When you gotta adjust the fan to have a blower directly at you and it's gonna dry out my eyeballs, but maybe it'll keep me a little cooler too. What are we gonna do today? Maybe we'll make some phone calls. Uh, live. We live a little bit. Try to like not move as much as possible to to get the to try to like get the heat to escape. Um, Myself, you know, how does that work? Like, if you don't move, maybe I'm just gonna stand or move only, only my mouth and stay very still and let the fan do its thing. I'm doing it. Um, I don't know, breathing, I guess, takes some kind of energy too. I'm moving around again. Let's get on the phone, see who's, who's here on the phone today. Oh, let's see, we had a good. Good amount of messages. Who's there, Mr. Ginsu? Oh yeah, Mr. Ginsu and Yellowfellow tried to call us too. 
All right, well, let's just start it up. Let's call Freddy the producer. I think Freddy the producer is actually right in the middle of a camp. So, we'll call Yellowfellow first, and mm, we'll call Freddy towards the end if we, if we get to it. Yellowfellow, you called us. We're calling you back. It's a doozy. It's a doozy today. Yesterday, Yellowfellow was some rolling and smoking joints. So, Yellowfellow, how's your joints? Are they fully floppy? Alpha, did you set up your voicemail box? I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voicemail box that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. Why have you not set up your voicemail box, Alpha? When people are trying to leave you voicemails, and it doesn't work. Man, I think Freddy's out. I think he's doing camp. We'll call, call him anyway, leave him a message, and maybe we can catch him on a break or something before the show's over. Potentially. Just inform him that we're, we're on, we're going, we're recording. And then he had a chance to call back or not. Hey, you've reached Freddy Dobler. I can't come to the phone right now, but if you leave me a nice message, then I'll call you back as soon as I can. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hey, Freddy, it's the program. It's the daytime. It's very hot outside of you still inside of TCTV where you have AC. You, have, you ever find it hard to breathe when there's AC? Or maybe it's... uh. In my in my head, uh, it's like uh, when it's so hot out. I th sometimes I think, or when there's so much AC, I think that the air is weird. It's like, is this AC air weird compared to regular air? Because you breathe in the air, and if it's cold all around you, it's definitely air that's been affected by the AC unit. So it's like everything that you do use, but it gets usually all the time when you use the air, when you breathe the air, it's air that's been around in some way. Like you're not, it's not how fresh is the air around you. And people, oh, I need some air. I gotta get out of here. I need some air. But the air conditioning air is kind of confusing. And so it's either like breathing this air conditioned air or breathing really crazy hot air outside. It's like which air is the freshest? This hot air, hot air does not seem fresh. You know, freshness is maybe cool. Coolness and freshness to me, they go together and be like, I'm gonna eat this fresh soup, hot soup. Nobody says it's fresh soup. Lettuce is fresh. Uh, I don't know. A milk milkshakes are not fresh. Ice cream, fresh ice cream. Fresh is like a not not created like a put together things like fresh things that have to be like just like the natural form of it. Like this fresh meat. I don't know. Uh, fresh meat. That's like a like a, a weird uh, like damaging term. Like I'm like look fresh meat. That's to me. Not a food term. You don't call ever. People don't call actual meat fresh meat. Fresh meat is like a scary attacking thing. Like look at all this fresh meat. It's like somebody you want to get. Like you're gonna. Somebody is like taking advantage of others. That's what the fresh meat thing sounds like to me. It's time for fresh meat. Oh, I'm gonna like take advantage of these people that don't know what the they don't know the ropes. And I'm not gonna instead of telling them the ropes. I'm going to use their lack of rope knowledge to my advantage, and that's what the, the only time you'd ever use the phrase fresh meat, unless you're like, which kind of meat? Is this old meat? No, this is fresh meat. You don't say that. It's only the only time you're going to use that phrase. So think back. Have you ever used the term fresh meat in a real context? Because like outside of talking about the phrase itself, like I'm doing right now, I'm like, oh, I guess I've said fresh meat a bunch of times. But if you ever have, maybe you can consider that it's, it's a phrase that is, to me, 
negative it has negative connotations because what is it what is this fresh meat kind of thing anyway it sounds good I don't wanna hopefully I won't use it and I'll say look these people they need Goodbye. help these people are, are are new and they're novice maybe novices or something and I'm and instead of like taking advantage of their novices I'm gonna help them work their way to non-novice status. All right. I guess we're just going to call John Webster too all the time. I want to get a hold of him. It's been a while. See if we can ever break through his cover of uh, either helpers or um, just not answering the phone. Now he has, he has like a secretary, so it's hard to talk to him. John's like a politician or something. Like levels of of people who can find. Ooh, we're gonna have to leave another message for him. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Three, five. One. Oh. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, John. It's the program I'm calling you again to this voicemail box that I believe is going to that computer land in what I've decided is Oklahoma for some reason. Even though that. In Oklahoma, it's hot. It's too hot for computers. I still am theorizing that the message machine is in Oklahoma and that I'm being recorded to a hard drive in Oklahoma and then it's going out into the world after, you know, for nothing. For something, maybe. Something or nothing. I guess those are the options. And is it being recorded to a place? Are you ever listening to this? I think you're not, but I've come to the conclusion that maybe you're understanding this too some kind of like brain thing and I can't even you know when I talk to you on the phone when you're actually there on the phone very little communication ever actually happens anyway I'm like hey John what's uh what's it like to be you know a person of your time and you say Mariners won the game yesterday that's but that's and that's totally relevant and that's fine so I think that I like am, am, am picturing in my mind that I have a stronger like actual connection to you. If you are satisfied on the with message, your message, press one to listen to your message. I'm satisfied. Two, I don't need to listen to it. I'm just gonna say satisfied. Press, to send your message now, press pound to specify urgent priority. Press two. Message marked urgent to send your urgent message now. Press pound to reclass a thank you. Your message has been sent. Goodbye. Bye. It's I sent it with urgent priority. Yeah, it's like I feel like it's like I'm connecting more. John, I'm still talking to you even though the thing is off. But what's the difference? Because you don't check your voicemail anyway. So the connection between just me talking to you right now is stronger than the connection to there. But maybe I'm talking to you next year, John, if you're watching this. In uh, 2018, I'm talking to you, and I wonder where you are and how your helpers are doing, and, and now that you're back here watching this a whole year later, maybe you can call us again or understand what's happening, because I would like to talk to you on the phone, and where are you? You're not answering your phone anymore? You, maybe you think you're not you're waiting for the voicemail thing to go maybe you still have a, a phone voicemail thing but you don't know about the digital voicemail and I don't think you do unless your helpers do I haven't filled it up yet and maybe I would have filled it up by now it seems like it's been enough time that maybe your voicemail box has been filled up because I keep leaving these long messages I keep leaving the messages to capacity probably I don't know, more days than not these days? I'm trying to get a hold of you, so I'm calling you more days than not, leaving a full capacity message, and how many of these are going to make it until I fill up your voice mailbox? But maybe, you know, I was calling Dan Dobler, and I think I filled up Dan Dobler's voice mailbox, and, like, how long 
did that take though? Did I uh, did it, did it go the whole time? Like, I think it might have been the whole time. Like a year, it might have been years before I filled up Dan Doboy's voicemail box, and he still hasn't deleted any of them. Um, and I thought it was going to be full up, but it's still not full up. John's isn't, but it's only been, well, I would say, not even a year since John got this new voicemail box system. But maybe the years, is, maybe it's been longer than a year. I'm not sure anymore. The years go by so quickly to me now, and in the time, it's hard to judge how much time has been between the time that you started your voicemail box to now. I don't know how long that's been. Maybe months, maybe years. It's hard to, yeah, time, it's hard to think about time like that sometimes. Let's just start writing everything down. We'll start writing little things down. Say, this is the time I decided to start writing things down. Write that one down. And then say, how long have we been writing things down? I'm going to look at that and look in the writing. And then that'll be the most obvious one because it'll be written on the book. It's like, when did this book start even? And then we start writing down these little things. But who knows what's small enough to write down and, and what's not. And you never know what you're going to want to think about in the past because who knows what's going to be relevant in the future. It's hard to tell. And you're like, oh, well, that was relevant. I guess it's time when you switch your voicemail boxes over. That was relevant now. And that seems, you know, infinitesimal, not relevant at the time. And then you think back. So it's like this hindsight kind of deal about relevancy in the past. And you get to try to, I guess, remember all these little details about things. Maybe you're always making memories and they're in there somewhere about the relevancy of each day. In each moment of the day, in each moment, especially of these hours, maybe we get the uh, intern to write down every small moment, even after we're not here, because if I keep writing down the moments, am I going to live? Live the moments or write them down? In a way, we're already writing them down on the uh, here on on the show, but mm, on tapes. But nobody knows each detail more than me or you, viewers. And I don't think you remember the details, and I don't remember the details either. There's so many details. We've got to get somebody to, to categorize all this stuff, but then we're going to have to write down what each thing is and describe it in some ways. So if we want to go searching for it, what are we going to search for? Like, when did John voicemails start up? Like, how many words and which words are we going to use to describe these things and how are we going to know which words we're looking for to search for these things? It's probably a, it's a question with all information, really. How do you categorize information? Because what does it mean? And if you want to look at a question from the future and you have a question for the past, and you say, what is this? What's the answer to this question? And maybe you're not wording it in the way that they thought you were going to word it in the past when they're creating the information for you to use in the future. And you say, this is w the wording I'm using now, and it's not the correct wording because you don't know what it is because you're trying to find out what it is. So there's this wording from the past that you're trying to access, but you can't because you don't know what it's supposed to be even in the beginning. It's like, how am I even going to start looking for this thing in the first place if I don't even know what it is that the the words and the vocabulary that you use for this thing in the past that I'm trying to find now, and I don't know the vocabulary because I'm trying to look it up. Maybe you have to know a little bit of the vocabulary to start it off with. But who knows what the vocabulary is going to be, especially with these little details. Let's take a look at last year. Let's see how we did last year. It's 2000, looking into 2016. It's 2017 right now for us. It's the second. I got my Looks like it's bird. Bye. Bye. Yeah, hey, it's a commercial. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't know. Why I you know Carl's running I got my phone confiscated. Oh, you good bird, you deserve it. For being a sad sack. Really fun is an election, but nobody knows who won. You two are the worst. You're the worst. Yeah. I think they're the worst too. Again, past me. Fun episode. I could tell by the commercial. I've ever had bad audio. It's it's fine. Goodbye. Can you guys not hear the audio? Grandpa. Gosh, bird. That's derogatory. Are you bird and Carl? Sad sacks. Bringing me down already through the time.
Well, I guess sometimes you have good days, sometimes you have bad days, and those were not the best ones, Bird and Carl, because they're sad sacks. Don't be a sack. Everything's fine. I'm, I'm happy. I'm a happy sack. Happy, uh, you know, a sad sack is confined into a sack, and I'm just a, ha I'm a happy and open. Happy, uncontained vessel of joy. All right, let's take a look at this past, some of these days from the past. We're going to record this message to the future. We're going to say, hey, future, it's us to the past. Maybe we'll cue it up. Let's cue it up. Listen to a couple of these Mr. Ginsu messages. Record the message. And then, oh, okay. Here's what we're going to do. Excuse me. This is my plan for the next, you know, 15 minutes or so. Uh, record the message to the future. And then rewind the tape. A while, you know, maybe an arbitrary. Let's rewind the tape an uh, arbitrary amount of time, and then we're gonna watch, and then we're gonna listen to the Mr. Ginsu messages, and we're gonna go back, and maybe by the time we go back to it, we could have forgotten what we were gonna say to ourselves right now, and we're gonna say, remember when we, when you listen, like, hey, future, it's the past. How are those Mr. Ginsu messages? Did you listen to them in this time that you spent between the thing? Uh, remember how you were uh, happy, on uh, contained being of joy bye oh it's oh I'm gonna show this it's uh Wednesday okay bye there goes the bus I saw it ride by this is a, it makes a break it's got brakes it goes that's my um, bus that's my impression of a bus okay so now I'm gonna go put this one up here rewind it for an arbitrary amount of time. You hear it rewinding like this. All right. And okay, that was the time. Now we're gonna listen to these Mr. Ginsey messages, and then we're gonna go back and listen to the uh, the or look at those messages from the past too. Maybe we'll call some McDonald's, maybe we'll look at some Mr. Catherine stuff. We'll see how the mood strikes us when we get there. Okay, Mr. Ginsu leaving messages on Tuesdays. Maybe. Holy cow, I'm sitting here whistling, trying to learn to whistle a little loud. But somehow I just whistled like a whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Whistle. Trying to learn how to whistle? The commercial on TV whistled right back at me in the same exact whistle that I just whistled. It was like, what the what? I mean, it was like one second later, it whistled back at me. Or less, maybe. I don't know. What? Oh, the bird? A bird? I'm being real. Communicating with birds now? Oh, what the app over? Most birds I hear, I think, are, are the goals these days, being down here in Olympia. They go, all day. It's a horrible noise. I would rather hear the whistling birds. Yeah, the seagulls, they had the worst calls when they were around. They're not cute. The seagulls are dirty. So the news was saying how coppers are having trouble with their cars leaking carbon monoxide into the cabin. And uh, I guess one copper passed out, smashed the car into a ditch or something. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened there, but uh, he probably smashed the car into something if he passed out while he was driving. So anyway, um, and they say millions more people are having the same problem. And I guess you could say I'm one of them. Partially due to being broke, partially due to being crippled a while back. <laughs> Which I really ain't anymore, motherfucker. 
Motherfucker, motherfucker. Hey, I don't believe that shit, but whatever. I ain't freaking crippled no more. Maybe I should freaking fix the motherfucker now. God damn. You're gonna Maybe fix the You're gonna fix the car? I just heard about the problem anyway. So anyway, fucker, I didn't freaking know everybody freaking had the same problem. God damn, you gotta get in there and replace goddamn exhaust donuts. And make sure your freaking exhaust don't leak. See, if your exhaust don't leak in the first place, well... Help the police. You and your shit ain't gonna be leaking into the passenger cabin through the freaking normal airway where it sucks in the air at the front of the freaking car. You know? And, uh... What the hell? It just means you got an exhaust leak. And fix the exhaust leak. And then you probably won't have no goddamn carbon monoxide leaking into the freaking passenger cabin. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Or you just gotta drill a hole in the roof and freaking make your air come in somewhere else. Right? <laughs> Install something on the roof. Let your fresh air come in off the roof. Not freaking out right on in front of the windshield, right? Normally, most of the air comes in there. You can help the police, Mr. Gensu, call them. But stuff comes out right from under the hood, right into there. Okay, hello, I um, am willing to help you. you a fan going, blowing shit around. I would like to help. Mostly sit still when that shit's happening. It has time to, uh, what do you call that? Get a whole bunch of it. Then you start seeping in and you get it breathing. Mine, I can smell it though. Mine smells pretty bad whenever it starts. What smells bad? Your car, the car exhaust? You can smell the car exhaust? And I'm pretty sure Mr. Ginsu is working right now. But we'll give him a call anyway. Maybe we'll just leave him a message and see if he's available. I don't think he is. If I had to guess, which I guess I don't have to guess, but I'm going to for my free will, I guess he's at work. I don't have to do anything, I guess. Probably you gotta eat. Well, you don't have to do anything unless if you, wanna li if you don't wanna live. You can just do nothing. But then you have to die. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Three, five, zero, three. Hey, Mr. Ginsu, it's the program. How are you? Uh, you, are, I think you're at work. That's why I got to get, or I didn't have to guess. I just did guess so for my own free will. Uh, you gonna go help the police? It's like help, help the police. Um, you could be a mechanic, Mr. Gintz. You could be a, a police car mechanic. I think they, they are, uh, no relevant. That's a good, like, that's a trade. Like, people, like, work for the police, and you know how you are, uh, so crazy about the police and stuff. You could work, work for them, and then... You could be in, like, it's like in the, uh, from the inside, but you wouldn't even be destroying them from the inside. You'd just be helping them, and maybe you could talk to them, and you could, and you could help with corruption a little bit. Not that I think it's totally corrupted, but I'm sure who would disagree that there's some small amount of corruption in there that you could talk to them, and, and you could, you could influence the, the, them in, in a positive way if you joined... It's like, and helped, and um, you can fix their cars, make people not pass out. Carbon monoxide, does carbon monoxide at low levels before it's like really harmful? Like before you start getting sick and passing out and dying and stuff at low levels, does it affect you in ways that you don't even know about? Everybody's so afraid of getting actually sick, but what about just like small amounts of poisoning? It probably affects you in some way. Maybe it affects your mood. Does it make you cranky? It probably just makes you, well... 
maybe it's being cranky is secondary because at first you're just a little bit tired. You're like, oh man, I don't, I'm, I'm not feeling totally healthy. Slightly nauseous, slightly dizzy because of light carbon monoxide poisoning. Probably, I mean, light carbon monoxide poisoning you everywhere. Reach the maximum time permitted for recording your message. If you are satisfied with your message, press one to listen to your message. Press two to erase message review. Hey, Mr. Gintsu, it's the program. How are you? Uh, you are, I think you're at work as well. I got to get, or I didn't have to get this yet, but uh, well, uh, you gonna so help the police? Help, help the police. <laughs> help the police. Um, yeah, I remember I'm getting like slightly carbon monoxide poisoned all the time because of the cars. I'm. You know, pretty much constantly around some kind of traffic. I don't go into the woods too often. And really, how far away can you get from a car unless you start uh, moving? Because you usually drive to where you're going. So there's constantly this carbon monoxide in the air. And if it's getting poisoned, that's like slowly just a little bit. Or if it's fine, if you only get a little bit of it, you just filter it out. And it takes like quite a bit to do it. Probably just, I think I'm just affected by the heat actually now. Maybe it's getting to me more just as I'm sitting here and like getting used to it. So it's like you get used to the heat, but then it's like affecting you in ways that you don't know if you're not like registering it, like in your mind, which might be where I'm at right now. Feeling starting to feel bogged down from the heat, or maybe I'm just like uh, getting psychosomatic um, poisoning. Hey, future is us the past. Hey, past. That? Okay, bye. 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 How far back did we go? Maybe real far. It's Wednesday, and I'm doing this this effect you hear on my sound two, today. Like we got that call from Brazil. I remember Remember that? that? Oh, yes, I do. I'm okay, Brazil. Bye. Bye. Oh. Ew. Ew. What do you like to do with your time? Look at this. It's Africa. Remember when we were looking at Africa from Mr. Uh, Catherine? Yes. He's out in Africa. Maybe. Well. Oh, come on. Well, bye. Bye. Sure. Hey, future, it's us of the past. Hey, past. Say hi to the past. Yo. Say something. Hello, past. Or future. Hello, future. <laughs> Hello. I hope you're enjoying the vegetation. Birds in Seattle. Bye. 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 Sure, all right. Hey, future. It's us the past. Hey, past. It's way in the past. Mr. All right, future. What do you have to say to the future? Say, say this thing about your family. Just try not to tell me not to kill them people before Jesus. <laughs> Don't things. kill anybody, Mr. Ginsu. Okay, bye, future. Bye. Okay. It's us, the past. It's episode 2500. Yay. Yeah. All right, bye. Bye. Future, it's us, the past. Hey, future. What's up? Uh, it's it's sunny and bright. I'm eating a blackberry. I hope you can find a blackberry in the future. Bye. Bye. How are you? How are your fingers? How are your bones? My bones are solid. Me too. Your bones solid. Do they hurt? Uh, yeah, no. Let's rub it in. It's Tuesday. I have all fingers. It's good. Eyes. Things. I have my eyes, my future. Bye. Bye. I'm a live person. Hey, future, it's us of the past. Hey, past. All right, what do you have to it's say? Kenny. And he's way in the past. Yeah. What do you, what do you have to so say? He don't believe in ISIS. It's, yep. All right. Okay. Bye, bye future. It's a media construct, Mr. Ginsu. Past. There's bird. Bird, you're awake today. Sad sack bird. Usually, on these messages, you're asleep. Hello. 
Bird saw somebody try to put a card into uh receipt slot. Yeah. That's not where Bye. they go. Bye. Yeah, how many fingers do you have? All Remember today, them. tomorrow's gonna be the day when people turn in things arts and crafts to the Thurston County Fair. Oh it's nighttime. I'm alive. Me too. I feel pretty good. How do you feel? Great. Thank you. Alive. Bye. Bye. The past. Well, it's well, well, Saturday, well. and we're over here. Uh, we're called Mr. Ginsu. And uh, well, I might get some hand. Okay, bye. Bye. I think it's the last day of July. I don't think that there is a July 31st. July. Th oh, here's the calendar. Nope. There is. There is, actually. <laughs> there is. Yep. You're wrong. There is a July 31st. Okay, bye. Bye. Remember when you got noodles? Oh, that was pretty good. What was that, Monday? I had to turn in 20, like, four things or something. Today's There's Wednesday. There's kind of lots of things. It's it's very hot today, but it's only uh, 8. I heard it's going to be way hotter. So if you're watching this probably through these days, it's going to be getting hotter and hotter. Oh, as yeah, that's see. true. That's today. Uh, if you're watching this in a few days and you're watching all of these all week, it's a hot Stay day. Stay hydrated. Stay I'm trying. Cool. I'm trying. Future. Thank you. Thanks for the past. Bye. My pleasure. I'm eating pizza still. So. Well, I could go for This is the pizza. first day of August. Hey, August. It's, hot. it's getting hotter and hotter. Too hot. Maybe. Thank you for being you and alive. Oh, oh, bye. My pleasure. Stop. Two messages. Did you listen to them in this time that you spent between the thing? Uh, remember how you were uh, happy, uncontained being of joy? I remember. I remember that. That's a good Bye. thing to be reminded of, though. Oh, it's. Oh, I'm gonna show this. Yeah, it's, what day uh, is it? It's Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. The second. Bye. Wednesday, the second of August. We made it all the way through July and then to August and through the first day of July and all the other times too. We're in the second half of the year already. It's time for going zoom zoom. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, okay. It is hot. Hey, let's go. Let's take a look at some uh, Mr. Catherine. in Africa before we uh, move on I guess to McDonald's phone calls this is the presidential palace where power was turned over to the communists in 1975 Uh, training province and get to uh, Cambodia. Yeah. So uh, the government want to widen the highway here. You see, that's on both sides. That they widen the street here. Yeah. Make them bigger so people can have like a six lanes street here and connecting from Saigon to Cambodia. So this is a rubber tree plantation. It's just very well organized goes on and on and on. You know I live eight miles from Dallas now. Up from the tree from here here. Out this way down here. Yeah? And they cut this thing. So I this thing. Yeah. And they cut them like this here and then they have this bow here. And they have something to hold on like this because it is the season they don't have it done, so they uh, let the rubber, rubber have a rest. They have like this here and with a small thing coming out, and nothing's running down here. Yeah, they have exactly. them. Yeah, we saw them out the other Yeah. Welcome to the Kuchi Tunnel System. This is where the Viet Cong dug three levels. 
villages and tunnels, 250 kilometers long. In fact, they were under part of the army base itself. It took them a long, long time to figure out where the Viet Cong were coming from. Walking down through the... The jungle. This is like what they talk about when they say like welcome to the jungle. You know, maybe. Oh man, I the tower for shower. <laughs> Look at that dog. For lying down. Are you sure it's no not any inside here? Uh wait a minute. I'm pulling it all the way out and then we'll tell you. <laughs> okay, you ready? One, two, three, go! <laughs> yeah! Oh. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, that's it. All of it. Missile cluster bombs. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. This is on the helicopter. Yeah, yeah. They kept the, mu the missiles. Freaky. From the American Army. Yeah, yeah. I got it. But they everything here is from this collection from the American Army. You uh, used to bomb our uh, fighting in this area. But they also have small. So they have to collect them. If not, we have too much and we can't work on the field. What was the case? What? Souvenir. Souvenir. Thank you. So you see a lot of the, uh, a lot of the understanding of this bomb, they found out after that one, they cut them half. So they get the explosion inside and they use for making like landmines and other things. They cut them half. Oh, so they get the explosion inside and they use for making like landmine or, or, or Vietnamese people now, lots of them cut them out and get that from fish to fish like that and they got killed too. Hold on. Hey, fish, so explosive fishing. Went to the new economic zone. So you know what I used for? Swimming pool. Yeah, sure. Beautiful swimming pool. Yeah. Yeah. So we just used that one for swimming pool. So um, after the war time, so many people they have this one. So what they do? They have to fill it so they can grow rice. Or sometimes some of them use as the fish pond. So fish pond for them. Yeah. Mosquito. Yeah, and uh, I remember, like I told you before, that's my countryside because they have a lot of those things. Mm -hmm. So we collect like landmines or bullets or things like that. So that's why I said the bullet here is so you one dollar for one bullet, come over here and then do Kuchi here and go to Saigon here. Saigon. So from here, from Saigon here to the tunnel here where we are here, it is about 65 kilometers, 65 to 70 kilometers. And you can see they have a lot of different colors inside here. The red color here we call the liberated area. Means this one is under control of the VC. Of course, the South Vietnamese government and the American soldiers try to send the troops here to get this one back too. But this one at night controlled by the VC. So we call the liberated area. And that blue color here, that is the base of the American soldier report. So there was a lot of different bases here, big and small ones everywhere, right? They, have, they said they had more than 200 of them. But here is the biggest base, Dong Yu base, 25th Infantry Division, this one right here. This is a model of the tunnel system. You can see that. That's crazy. It has three different layers. Yeah, you like have you seen this area, before? This color here, I'm not sure. It's three, six, it's and nine mil and meters the down. That's so wild. Wow, people stay, stay down there in the tunnels. And the black line here symbolizes for the tunnel. Black line like this symbolizes for the tunnel. Shelter here. It is one of the working rooms. And they found out this kitchen when they fought against the French in 1954. The Din Bin Fu. Battlefield. So what they did before is because when they when they put the cannons, uh, artillery up to the top of the mountain and fire down the valley, they have to keep them secret. So they build the kitchen under the ground. So they do like this here. When they cook them here, the smoke will be kept into these boxes here, this container. I don't know if I see Connecting to each other by a small pipe. And then the smoke will be will come out at the chimney far away from the kitchen. And just very softly, very little. 
So even those, if they fall out of the chimney, very hard for them to find out the smoke because they're coming out very little. But even if they fall out that one, they drop the bomb or destroy that one, it's still very safe for the people in the kitchen because it's far away from the kitchen, the chimney. Yeah, so that's the way. <coughs> that's one of the healthcare center here. There is like a bunker. I'm oh, sorry, that is the restore room where they keep weapons and food and everything here. And that is like a bunker to take the fresh. Uh, sorry, they took. Whoa. Tunnel system. We're outside a Vietnamese uh, cemetery. This is a wall depicting the different guns and people. U.S. soldiers and what have you. Wow. She's looking down the avenue to the end where there's a monument of a fallen soldier and another person. The monument to the fallen soldier are all these graves above ground? No, under the ground. Why are they all raised? They just a tomb for people to see. Very well kept. They build up all of the tombs above ground so they're very obvious. Not going to get lost. This was for both the South Vietnamese and for the Viet Cong also. You can see that they do bring out flowers. And there's an incense pot. So they'll bring that out here and burn it. Oh, wow. A record of one man. <sighs> Oh, cemeteries are sad, huh? Remember death? The sculpture is of a mother holding her son in grieving. Oh, sad stuff. Very touching scene. Mm-hmm. The graves go on and on and on. Wow. Lots of dead people, Mr. On to the side here is especially special tombs not any reason for it that I know oh, oh look at nighttime traffic it's crazy this is everybody's dressed the same absolutely unbelievable yeah. point out that yeah. it was 25 to 7 in the evening <laughs> This isn't five o'clock by the United States. Um, we can um, get back to the hotel. Oh, wow. That's what it's eating. That's what it's like. We'll get home in time for breakfast. Oh, we have to. Oh, <laughs> White people, enemies, babies. The mother is nice enough to let the let the ladies oh, look close to them. <laughs> it's tourist groups in Vietnam. Hello, hello, Vietnam uh, to tourist group. They're gonna sing. Um, God bless America, or I think it's a, a song that they like to sing. We're at the top of An's house, which is four stories overlooking the airport. Oh. Busy streets down here. Yeah, wow, look at the roundabouts. There's a, a lot. But motorcycles. A lot of motorcycles. 
pretty, kind of pretty crazy that now there's like smashing into each other. They have a statue of Mary and the child with lit up so it's visible. And communism. And we have Outside is the propaganda poster for the communist Vietnam. Quite a quite a contrast between Christianity and communism. Yeah, wow. Unbelievable. Believe it. It's like a weird. Maybe this is a dub. Yeah, you see that little rewind button on that? One last look inside Saigon track. Yeah, this is like a dub tape they just like put it at the end of the Africa tape or something. They're going into a karaoke bar now. It's like the same. Is it, what's going on. It's the same stuff as before. I'm gonna watch it again, but. I think we are watching the same vi videos from like a couple of months ago, but why not revisit this Mr. Catherine stuff anyway? I do remember this. So they're just like, oh yeah, they're doing my way. This is definitely the same one as before. That's okay. It's a different tape. Mr. Catherine's dubbing his own tapes, I guess. He recorded enough TV. <laughs> One Vietnamese guy is enjoying. They're just like watching it. Isn't it? They're just like all singing along. It's not how karaoke works, old boy people. Just one person. Everybody's just singing along and the, watching the TV from far away. That's silly. Setting area back behind the shelving. Four tables. Fruit, coffee, twin beds. Very nice. They're harvesting the rice. They sickle it off. The ladies are picking it up, carrying it over somewhere. Harvesting of the rice. Harvesting rice. It's cranking her up. Yum yum. Got her. Oh. Where it's 
throwing it in. I'm hungry now. Yeah, I should eat something. The heat is getting to me. Probably hot in Vietnam too. I don't know if it's 100 degrees though. Maybe. I guess I remember talking to. Whoa! What is this? Working pretty hard to knock it off. This is definitely talking to me now. Not like Alaska. I think this is later on. I'm glad that you're saying stuff. I want to hear your voice, Mr. Kaplan. It's like one part of these videos. Where are we going? We're at the Delta. In the Delta. All right, well. That's it for Mr. Catherine today. We only have a few minutes left. We had a good day, didn't we? Viewers, I had a good day at least. Um, we listened to some Mr. Ginsu messages. We looked into the past a little bit. We talked about the heat and uh, talked about some other things. Mr. Catherine was there. We didn't talk to anybody on the phone, though, I think. No other people on the phones today. Uh, tried to call John Webster and Mr. Ginsu and Freddie and Yellowfellow and left some messages. I think we left some good messages today. That's what happened, like full, full length messages. Um, it's only, it's only supposed to get hotter tomorrow even and then, you know, cool down slowly after that. So, stay hydrated viewers and keep, keep living. Here it is, the end of the show. Bam, 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 bam. Wednesday. Born every night on TCTV channel 22 at 11:30 and 2 a.m. Yeah, whitehwm.com. Check it out. 360-436-4384. It's our phone number. You can call and get on TV like Mr. Ginsu and Yellow Fellow. They call us today and they are on TV. 109 State Avenue, number three. It's our address. Check it out on the Washington 9501. Graham Graham, it's a good song. Thank you. TCTV, La Bebe, Jordi E, Fabulous Graham Graham, StuffLabel.com, Dumb Webster, Thurston County, Washington State, USA. Thank you. And uh, viewers, that's you. You're watching. Thank you. Ooh, scary bugs. Hell yeah, dog. Bye.